Hey everyone, I'm Chef Z and welcome back to my channel, Chef Z Cooks. Today we are back with another summer live streams as part of my Cook With Me series. <laughs> oh, we have some interruption from behind the camera. Turn that off, sir. I'm just full around my, not full around, I'm just messing with my husband. So thank you so much for joining us. Now, if you're new here, welcome. I'm Chef Z. I love to cook some really delicious and easy recipes and share them with you guys. Normally, I make much shorter videos, but for the summer, we're hanging out a little bit more. We're getting cozy. We're getting to know each other. Now, I do like to give people just a few minutes to join us. So it's about 7.02, at least by my clock here. So I just like to give people a couple of minutes. I see that we have some people who have already started chatting up in the group chat. I love that. We have, let's see, Alberto Gomez from El Paso, Texas. Hi, thank you for joining us all the way from Texas. We have CG Pipeline from Brooklyn. Hello, hello. You said much love from BKZ. Can't wait to get this group chat going. Thank you so much for that. We have Eddie Say that. Eddie Say that. Sorry, I'm probably saying that wrong and you told me before how to say that. So I'm so, so sorry. She was actually the first person to comment on the group chat. So you, my friend, are the real one and are the OG. Thank you so much, Mr. A. Woo -woo. You're saying that you love this recipe and you want to make it with guava, but you're going to learn how to make it. Now, wait till you see all the delicious ingredients that I am going to incorporate into today's recipe. I'll go into a little bit more detail. We have Brianna. Hi, Chef Z. Hey, what's up? How are you guys doing? Hi, from Palm Beach. Oh, I know the weather down there just has to be nice near the beach. I actually live near the beach and it has been a struggle to get to the beach this summer because if you follow the news, <laughs> the New York beaches have just been plagued by shark sightings. So I can't tell you how many times we've gone to the beach and it's like, just kidding. You can't get into the water and it's just like, ugh, mayhem. But we did actually, we did get to have a pool day last weekend, which was really nice. I got a little bit of color on me. So I'm getting into my little summer shade, which I always, always love. We have Christian Rios who says, hi, Chef Z. Can't wait to begin making the no bake trifle with my mom and follow the instructions. Oh my goodness. So if you're going to follow along, super, super excited because we're actually making everything together today. There's not much that I made ahead of time with the exception of one ingredient, but it's an ingredient that you can also buy at the store, so there's no need to worry about that. We have Marissa from Jersey. What's up? I'm actually going to be in Jersey this weekend. We have Hey from Chi-Town. What's up? Oh, funny story. I recently, someone recently mistook me for someone else, and they thought that I was from Chicago. And they're like, oh, just kidding, you're from Detroit. And it's just like, nope, definitely from New York. <laughs> through and through. <laughs> But hi, from Chicago. Um, I actually almost moved to Chicago years ago um, before my cooking and my YouTube days. Uh, someone said, just came from the beach here in Long Island. No sharks today. Patricia, oh, amen. Because I feel like all summer long, it's like every other day, it's like a shark sighting, a shark sighting. There's also like a super cool photo floating around the internet. I think like a baby great white shark. Uh, washed up ashore and they caught like a really good photo of the shark and I died because I actually really really love marine animals so oh this is a good one this is a good one comment in the group chat and let me know when you were younger what is it that you wanted to be when you grew up like everyone you know when you're in kindergarten and you're in elementary school they you know the teachers are always like hey what do you want to be and a bunch of people say astronaut and firefighter and you know so many other cool things i actually wanted to be a i actually wanted to be a marine biologist so i personally love the ocean love aquatic animals love sea animals i myself am an aquarius so um i actually have a very very special connection to the ocean and marine life so when i saw the photo of the great white like i was super super excited i'm like i'm like the only like nut job who like wants to see a shark sighting in person from a safe distance obviously because i don't well, anything happen to me but again i just love sea animals and dolphins and killer whales are actually my favorite animal we have beauty killer d hey you've been to a couple of live streams so thank you so much he said back with chef z hey sending love from colorado 
Hello, hello. We have Lourdes who says, Hey, Chef Z, love you, Dominican from Jersey. Oh, Beauty Killer D says she wanted to be a ballerina. That's super cute, super cute. Uh, Mr. A said, oh my God, that's funny. I wanted to be a chef. Listen, there's still time to make that dream a reality. And we have Christian who says, watching this and cooking from the city of Miami, Florida, home of alligators and crocodiles. Oh, baby boy. <laughs> funny, when I was in New Orleans, I actually had a uh, gator po' boy. It was pretty good. Not gonna lie. Pretty good. Uh, Patricia, since third grade, a nurse, and I am an RN of over 20 years. I love my career. Oh, that's pretty dope. That's pretty, pretty honest. Um, we have Sharika who says, I wanted to be a chef because I watched Julia Child and Chef Justin at Cage. Oh, my goodness. That's actually pretty funny. I'm surprised how many of you wanted to be a chef when you were younger. I keep looking at my husband because it's actually pretty dope. Um, I didn't know that... I wanted to be a chef, I would say, I was probably in college. I was probably, yeah, I was in college. Well, it's not true. It was right after college. Um, and I was struggling because I actually, not to give too much away of myself, uh, I actually went to school for screenwriting and I wanted to be like the next Shonda Rhimes and I wanted to write movies and epic novels and all sorts of things and uh, I was struggling. My grandmother passed away right when I graduated from college and I always loved food because we had this special connection and that's when she passed away, that's when I realized that my true calling was not to just be a storyteller but to be a storyteller through food which is what I get to do with you guys. And with that being said, I feel like that's a great segue to jump into today's recipe. So today we're going to be making a no-bake strawberry trifle. Now, I'm switching up the recipe just a little bit because I am going to be adding some yummy, yummy guava jam to the mix. As Hispanics and as a Caribbean girl, I cannot resist the urge of guava. It's actually one of my favorite things to eat in life. I'm about to put y'all on and you guys don't even know. Instead of your average PB&J at night, or at least that's when I eat them, um, try, a try a peanut butter and guava jam sandwich. That is to die for. Now, the beauty about this dish is that it is actually a no-bake dish. There is no baking required. So if you are new to baking, if you're scared of baking, or if you have people who just showed up to your house and you're like, man, I need something sweet on the table, I need to do it in like 15 minutes or less, then this is definitely going to be a recipe that you will love. Now keep in mind that if you wanted to bake the pound cake and some of the ingredients yourself, you definitely can. Now the ingredients for this dish are super, super easy. I have them listed down below in the description box and they're also right here on screen. So if you want to screenshot them so that you can follow along, I'm sure they'll pop up here and there throughout the live stream. Now, in order to make this no-bake strawberry guava trifle, we're going to need, excuse me, <laughs> we're going to need some pound cake or even just some, some plain vanilla cake. Now, you can definitely bake the pound cake if you want. I actually have one of the dopest pound cake recipes that I haven't shared yet on my channel because I don't know, y'all gotta let me know. Like, are y'all really into sweets or not? Because, fun fact, I went back to school specifically for baking. I am a pro baker. I bake quite a bit and I never get to showcase that. Um, follow me on Instagram if you wanna see some of my cake creations. I, also, I definitely share them there. There was a time when your girl had a catering company and also had a cake company. So. To round off the rest of the ingredients, we also have some sweet condensed milk because here's the thing. This no-bake trifle is not your average no-bake trifle. In fact, it's going to have like a Tres Leches vibe to it, which is out of this world, super, super delicious. We're going to add some fresh berries to it and some whipped cream just to round everything out. Now, I see the group chat. I see it on like, the corner of my eye. It's just like going, going, going. So I want to see what you guys are saying. So we have Blush and Princess. You said you wanted to be a flight attendant and now you're terrified of flying. Oh my goodness. That is, that's kind of funny actually. Uh, we have Princess who said that you wanted to be a doctor 
And we have Jazz who says you wanted to be a girl truck driver. There are, I don't think I've ever seen a girl tr a truck driver, but now you're a nurse practitioner. Lots of nurses in the group chat. Hello, hello. Um, let's see, someone says I love strawberries. Um, Chef Z, when I graduate from high school, I want to be a chef, but I also want to be an MMA fighter. Ooh, that's pretty cool. That's pretty, again, so many chefs in the, like, that's awesome. That, no wonder you guys are here because we all, like, just connect with food. All right, so to get started with this recipe, you want to take some pound cake. Now, this is some store-bought pound cake, and I bought it today. It was, like, freshly made. I got it from my local bakery. Super, super good. You can pretty much find this anywhere, and you can also actually bake it yourself. In, in telling you guys that I make a pretty dope pound cake, it made me realize that, like, hey, I think I actually want to film that video for you guys because that'll be pretty good. When I make my cakes, that's actually one of the recipes that I use. So we're just pretty much going to take this, and then we're going to take a serrated knife. And a serrated knife is a knife that has these little, I don't know, I don't even know what you call them. Serrations, <laughs> you know, it's these little things, right? These little teeth, if you will. That's what makes it a serrated knife. You use this type of knife to cut some bread. And I'm just going to cut them into roughly about half inch slices. And you wanna be more or less even when you're cutting these slices so that you more or less have even layers, but it's totally fine if they're not. Now this is, a, this is a type of dessert that is so easy to make that people are gonna seriously think that you are this star baker. If you have kids at home or little ones, get them involved with this because this is super cool. Now what I like to do is, I'm actually going to take half of these in the full size that you see here, and I'm actually going to just set them aside because I'm gonna want some full pieces and I'll show you why. I want some full pieces and then I'm gonna want some half pieces. So I just stack them and I cut them lengthwise, just like you saw here. This guy, I'm just gonna cut in half because we're gonna need little pieces here and there just to kind of fill in the gaps. I'm just setting this off to the side Again, I'm just gonna cut this guy, again, cause there's gonna be some odd pieces that I'm gonna cut this guy in half. Again, cause we're gonna have some odd pieces that we're gonna need. I'm gonna take my second loaf and I'm going to do this same exact thing, which all I'm really doing is taking my loaf of pound cake, I'm cutting them roughly into half inch pieces, leaving half of them cut whole and then the other half I'm gonna slice them in half and then I'm just gonna pre-cut some odd pieces just because I know I'm going to need them. And so here we go, just half inch pieces. Now using a serrated knife, like it just makes it easier to cut the bread. But if you don't have a serrated knife, a regular knife will also do because at the end of the day, the pound cake is so fluffy that anything will pretty much cut through it. And just like before, I'm just gonna take half of these whole pieces. I'm gonna set them off to the side. I'm gonna stack these guys and I'm just going to cut them in half. Set that aside as well. And now I'm just gonna take these guys, I'm gonna cut them in like quarters. Well, these guys in quarters, cause you never know. And you guys know, oop, we lost one, did we? No, I got them. You guys know I like to do as much prep work as possible. So next up, we're going to take our wash fresh strawberries and we're going to slice them up. And I recommend that you actually, if you're gonna serve this to friends and family, either make it the night before or the morning of, try to serve it as fresh as possible because strawberries, these days, especially if you get them fresh, I feel like they go bad within like two or three days. So when you get them, you definitely have to have plans for them. I'm just looking over here at the group chat and someone said, oh my God, I have to try that PB&J. Trust me, it's so, so good. We have Amina that says, yes, post some baking recipes. If y'all bug me enough, well not bug me because you guys wouldn't be bugging me, but if you guys ask me, trust me, I will make it happen. Do you have a quick tres leches video using box cake? I actually don't. Um, 
I'm happy that you said that. So I'm just, while I'm answering that question, I'm just gonna start slicing the strawberries really quickly. All I'm doing is cutting off the head, if you will, with the little, little green stuff at the top. And then I'm just going to slice them this way. So now, and then I'm gonna set, oh, I put that in the wrong place. And now I'm just going to set this off to the side. Yeah. So to answer your question about do I have a quick recipe using tres leches with um, box cake, I know a lot of people will make a tres leches cake using pound cake and it tastes delicious. The issue with tres leches cake is that tres leches cake, in order to have a really, really good tres leches cake, you have to actually get a pound cake, I mean a sponge cake. So you need a cake that's like super light and fluffy so that it can absorb all of those yummy, yummy milk mixtures that you put into it. And the issue that you have with using a pound cake or even using a store-bought box cake is that those cakes tend to be a little bit too dense. And so the milk doesn't actually really penetrate into the actual cake as much as it just kind of like sits on top. So you can do it, you can use any one of them. I recommend using, if you're gonna do it, I recommend either using some type of angel cake or a plain vanilla cake. I would avoid using a butter cake because I know like that's like a popular um, flavor because again, it'll just be a little bit too rich. It'll still come out amazing. If you can, definitely use sponge cake or angel cake. And I know that sometimes at some of your local bakeries, you can actually buy a plain sponge cake. And then that's like a super easy hack to making tres leches cake. Funny enough, I have two videos on my channel on how to make a tres leches cake. And I'm actually going to be updating that recipe very, very soon this holiday season. So stay tuned with that. I hope you guys are excited for that video because I'm super, super excited to actually film it. Now again, guys, I'm just moving along and dicing up the strawberries. You want the strawberries in about quarter inch pieces and any piece that may not be so good, like I have this guy right here, just toss that off to the side totally fine and it doesn't have to be an exact science they don't have to be exactly the same width but as closely as you can get it works best so let me see what you guys are talking about so we have Celeste who says, good evening, I just got here. I made sure I had dinner before coming. Only have two minutes and now I'm starving, thanks a lot. Well, thank you so much for joining us. I hope you didn't rush and you actually got to enjoy your dinner. Um, I actually have not had dinner yet because I don't know why. I knew I was making something sweet today, but for some reason, se me capo la mente. And I didn't even plan for dinner. And then I'm looking at my husband like, babe, what are we having for dinner? So leftover it is. Funny enough, we still have some of the meatballs left over. So that's gonna be a really, really nice dinner with a little arugula salad, only because it'll be kind of late. So I don't wanna eat too, too heavy today. Let's see, what else are you guys having? Jazz said, uh, oh, I love, can I say that I love the fact that you guys like talk to each other in the group chat? Cause that's exactly, the type of relationship and camaraderie that I want you guys to have in the group chat. I'm also loving hearing you guys talk about all the different things that you wanted to be when you grew up. Someone says rinsing strawberries with vinegar makes them last longer. I have to try that. I've actually seen that hack on Instagram and on TikTok and I keep meaning to try it. I guess like my fear is that they will just taste like vinegar because vinegar is a little bit acidic. But so strawberries can be kind of tart if you get them a little bit early. So I've been meaning to try that. The other thing that I'm curious, have any of you guys tried the vegetable and fruit rinse from Trader Joe's? I know they sell it. I've never gotten it. I guess because I just have the habit of whenever I'm buying fruit, like I usually have plans to eat them within like a couple of days so that they don't go bad on me but anything to make my fruits and my veggies last longer is a huge, huge plus. 
So Rachel says, what are you making again? Sorry, was late. No need to apologize. Listen, I know we all have a lot going on and we all can't make it here exactly at seven o'clock. So today we are making a no bake strawberry trifle with guava. And we're also going to be adding some sweet condensed milk because it's gonna have a little bit of a tres leches vibe. Now what I've done so far is I've cut up the pound cake into some roughly half inch pieces. And now I'm just slicing up the strawberries because this dish is also going to have some fresh strawberries. We have lured this that says that some, you bought two packs of strawberry yesterday and some of them are already going bad. Trust me. Um, oh, so Jazz says it's a quick rinse and it doesn't change the flavor at all. I get about three to five extra days. Oh, that's huge. That's huge. That's, that's actually really good to know. I'm, I'm, not even, I'm not even joking you. I'm going to try that this week because the way I eat strawberries, I eat strawberries almost every single day because I love to put them into my Greek yogurt. So I have in the morning, I usually have two hard boiled eggs with some chicken breakfast sausages. And then on the side, I have some Greek yogurt with granola and some strawberries. So I eat strawberries a lot, a lot, a lot. All right, so I'm cutting up the last of the strawberries. And by the way, when it comes to this, you can add as much strawberries as you like or as little. It's definitely, definitely up to you. Sam said that's a lot of strawberries. Uh, when I tell you I am a strawberry fiend, funny enough, this is only a box of strawberries. So one regular box of strawberries is what this is but i'm just slicing them up because again i like to be a little bit generous when it comes to the strawberries all right so that's actually it for the strawberries guys so i'm just going to set this off to the side because now let me just get my thing because now we're actually going to start building our trifle, which I am super, 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 super excited about. If you have any questions, feel free to comment in the group chat. Sorry, I haven't even eaten yet. I'm already doing my little like, I'm eating happy dance. And that's because I love this. All right, so to make the trifle, I'm going to be using this circular, it's not a pot, it's dish, dish. <laughs> container sorry guys um it's been a long day um we had some car troubles not fun i'll spare you the story but it's been a long day anyway so i'm using this glass container here by the way you can also use a square dish i personally like to use something a little bit on the taller side because it means that you get a, a few more layers which makes it super appealing and super fun to eat now to build our trifle, again, this is the fun part. We're gonna take our whole piece that we cut up and we're just going to line them up as best as we can. And this may take like two or three pieces, but remember, we had some odd pieces that we cut up. So perfect example. This area right here doesn't take a whole piece, so that's why we cut them in half. And it's fine, you just wanna like squeeze them in there as best as you can. And then we're gonna take another half piece. We're gonna put that in the center. Remember those quarter pieces that we have? Well, it doesn't fit perfectly, but that's why we keep our knife handy dandy, cause then we just squeeze that in there. Same thing here. You just want to fill in as many pieces as possible. Now, if you have a few little gaps, that's totally fine, that's okay. And now, this is where we're going to give it that little bit of that Tres Leches vibe. We're going to take our sweet condensed milk and we're just gonna very generously just drizzle it onto the pound cake and it's gonna give it a little bit of extra sweetness. So let's go ahead and drizzle that in there. Oh, so good, so good. And then I take like just my little spatula and I just like spread it as much as I can 
it doesn't have to be perfect. So, so, so good. Oh, uh, yes. So when the cake is pretty much wet with the sweet condensed milk, that's when we actually want to go in with the whipped cream, which it's not here, so just one second. So here I have some whipped cream. Now I actually made the whipped cream myself. It's super easy to make. You just take some heavy whipping cream, add some sugar and some pure vanilla extract and you whip it together until it's nice and fluffy. You can also buy whipped cream like Cool Whip um, at your local grocery store. I just had all the ingredients to make it so I decided to make it fresh. Hopefully, it will not go flat on me because it is kind of warm. So I tried to keep this as chilled as possible. Now a trick to making some really good whipped cream is that when you actually make it, make sure your bowl is chilled, make sure your whisk is chilled. And please, unless you have like the biceps of like Thor or Hercules, don't do it by hand. That's what we have electric machines for. So either use a hand mixer or use a stand mixer. I definitely use my hand mixer. So to make this, we're going to just take, actually, we're going to take a spatula. We're going to take a spatula and we're going to take a healthy serving and we're just going to dollop some in there. Someone said, saludo desde Washington Heights. Saludo, saludo. Someone said, you better dance, Chef Z, wepa. <laughs> So now that I put the whipped cream in there, I'm just going to very gently nudge it. Now, by the way, I am using an offset spatula, but if you don't have an offset spatula, I'm going to show you how you can actually do this with the back of a spoon. It's super, super easy. Because again, this is a type of dessert where you don't need fancy tools. So if you don't have like professional baking tools that's totally fine and you just want to like spread it because this is all about creating layers so you just want to spread it more or less evenly this is very much like a rustic type of dessert so don't feel like everything has to be perfect and now remember all those like million and one strawberries that we cut up now we're just going to add them now, I always like, if you want to like make sure that they're super pretty, make sure that like the red part of the strawberry kind of like touches the plate, the outside rim of the dish so that you can see it. But it does not have to be perfect at all. So I'm just like placing them there. Lazy Sunday say, yes, I always make my own whipped cream. It's actually super easy. And I think a lot of people don't realize just how easy it is. Someone here says, mm, sweet condensed milk. I love sweet condensed milk in practically everything. So Jahida says, can I make sweet condensed, I mean, can I make whipped cream for you guys one day? Absolutely, absolutely. So as you see, I pretty much like filled all like the outside rim with the strawberries. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add the inside. And you can make this layer as thick or as thin as you want. Now, obviously the taller the dish, the more ingredients you're going to need. And again, I just like to be generous with my strawberries. All right, so once I put the strawberries in, we're gonna repeat. And now we're gonna take our whole piece of pound cake. We're gonna very gently press it in. Making room. Now, just like before, we know that this little area right here doesn't take a whole one, but it'll take a half one pretty perfectly. And then we have the other guy that we put here. And you see, like I was telling you before, like as you're building this, you're going to notice you have these like odd gaps. And that's when you just like those odd pieces that we cut ahead of time. That's what they're there for. 
Now, this is why it's also important, more or less, that you cut these all in like similar sizes so that the layers are like as even as possible. And now for the fun part again, we're going to add the sweet condensed milk. This is hands down my favorite, favorite part. We just drizzle some over top. Oh yeah, mira eso. Ah. Oh yeah, don't be cheap with the sauce, no ma'am. I, sh I should say, this is, this is not a healthy dish. This is not a healthy dessert. <laughs> this is 100% a decadent dessert. <laughs> so if you were looking for a dessert that was like, buena para la dieta, this ain't it. I'm sorry to report. <laughs> this is hands down a strawberries and sweets lover type of dessert. So now one of the differences with this layer is that this is the layer that we're actually going to add the guava. We have a comment? Brand. Oh, what brand? So this is the Iberia guava, but there's so many different types of guava and just know that guava can actually range in different colors. I'll actually show you. So these are both guava jams. So this is actually a guava jam that my sister-in-law got me because she knows that I love, actually, <laughs> when I tell you that I love guava jam and peanut butter sandwiches, this is what my sister-in-law gives me on a regular because I love these two combinations. So like I said before, these are the two combinations that I love putting together. However, guava, can also come in different colors. So this is also a guava jam, but as you can see, this one had chunks in it and I didn't want it to have chunks. So I found one by Iberia that has that rich color that a lot of you guys probably know from eating Dominican cake, cause oh, so, so good. But that's the brand that I use and I think, I believe it's linked in my Amazon store. But just know that it comes in different colors. Is there a substitute for the guava? Yes, so if you didn't want to use guava jam, you can also use some strawberry jam. You can use any kind of jam. You can use a raspberry jam. You can even use a pineapple jam. Just try and choose a, a jam with fruit flavors that go together. So for example, you can use a strawberry jam and you're gonna get that beautiful red color in your trifle. But if you didn't want to use fresh strawberries because you feel like that might be strawberry overload, then you can also substitute the fresh strawberries maybe with some fresh mangoes. I've done that before, so good. So good. You could also use bananas instead, but as far as jams, your favorite one will do. Another one of my favorite jams is actually apricot jams. That's amazing in the fall. So definitely give that a try. All right, so now I'm gonna take the guava jam, which I also like freaking love, and I'm just going to add it now to the trifle. And as you guys can see, I haven't baked yet. And this dessert is coming out to be so, so good. It's a way to impress your guests. <laughs> and if, like I said, like this is a great one to get the kids involved. If you're someone who's not all the way comfortable in the kitchen, this definitely gets you going. So I just like spread it. And if it dips into the previous layer, that's totally fine. And again, you just wanna have like a nice generous layer Oh, so, so good. Now, the other thing that you could also do is that you can take the, sometimes the guava comes like in like stick form and you can add, you can put some heat to it like over in un sartén chiquito, like a little small saucepan. You add a little bit of water, a little bit of sugar, depending on how sweet it is, and you can turn it into a jam. So good. Do you have a recipe for Cuban pastelitos? I do. I definitely do have recipes for Cuban pastelitos. It's an oldie but goodie. I should probably refilm it, but it's pastelito de guayaba con queso. It's on my YouTube channel. Search for it and it'll come right up. It's something that I make every single year, especially during the holidays. So now that I've made my layer of just the, whatchamacallit, the sweet condensed milk and the guava, we're going to add another layer of the pound cake and just like before we're just going to oh 
Oh yeah, so, so good. And you just start like filling in the gaps as best as you can. It doesn't have to be perfect. And no one's gonna notice that they're perfect because as you can see, what you end up seeing are the layers. And when you cut it up, oh. All right, so now to this, it's rinse and repeat. We're gonna add the sweet condensed milk. Again, super decadent, super, super flavorful. We're gonna spread that so that everything is nice and coated. And now this is going to be, this might actually be our top, top layer. And now we're going to add the whipped cream. Oh, so nice. So, so, so nice. So we have Mr. A that says, yes, chef, make another video of the pastelito. <laughs> oh. So now we're just gonna smooth out. Now we're just gonna smooth out the whipped cream. Oh. And this is a layer that honestly you can have super fun with. You can make like you can just like swirl your spoon around, but it's gonna get remember, it's gonna get kind of covered with the strawberry, so nothing too fancy. And now we're gonna add the strawberry to this top top layer. Oh, CG Pipeline, thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate it. You guys are the best when it comes to supporting me and this channel. And I cannot say thank you enough. It like honestly brings me joy at how much you guys enjoy these recipes. So I'm just adding some strawberries to the top layer. And also, because I want to add some color, I also like to add some blueberries, just a very top layer, but totally up to you. And I'll show you something else that I like to do, too. Now, you can be, like, super fancy and, like, for example, like, you can, like, ribbon the strawberries. I'm not going to do that because that tends to take a little bit of time but you ribbon the strawberries essentially by doing this to them and you create almost like an assembly line. But again, I don't think you guys wanna sit here <laughs> for like 45 minutes watching me ribbon some strawberries. So I'm just, oh yeah. So, so good. So now, So now, all right, so now I'm going to add some fresh blueberries and you can add whatever other type of fruit that you want. And this just adds a little bit of color and a little bit of dimension to it. Now I'm so mad because I actually don't have any handy, but if you had some graham crackers or even some vanilla wafers, you can actually grate some over top for a little bit of added crunch. Oh, so good. Trust me when I tell you this thing is delicious. All right, so pretty much our trifle is done. We have a nice layer of strawberries and cream. In the center, we have the guava with the sweet condensed milk. And then the top layer is berries and cream again. This is super, super, super tasty. Now, pretty much what you wanna do next is, I know it looks delicious and you wanna dig right in, but hold back just a little bit, cover it with some saran wrap, put it in the refrigerator so that it sets a little bit and you actually can like take it out. Now, I will say it looks pretty in the dish, but when it comes time to serve it, you're gonna mess it up, but all those flavors combined are gonna be absolutely delicious. Now, babe, give them a little close-up before I take it out of the way. 
because I want to show them something neat and fun that they can also do. So if you guys can see all those fun, tasty flavors, so, so good. Tiger Lily says, now how do you serve that? You literally take a spoon, you go in there and you serve it out. It's a little bit messy when you serve it, but if you grate a little bit of like graham crackers and you put a mint leaf, it suddenly looks fancy all over again. And it's kind of like the art with the trifle. And one of the great things about actually setting it in the refrigerator is that it comes out a little less messy. Now what I forgot to do is you take some of the crumbs and you can actually like put it over top, but it's not gonna, I'm not even gonna do it, it's not gonna work with this. I would need some little, like something a little bit crunchier, but I like to like have like a little bit of crunch to it. We don't, maybe we don't have any. Oh, lies. My husband was like, we do have something crunchy. So I was just talking about how every day I eat yogurt and granola and we have some granola. So right before you serve it, this is something that I would also like to do is just take some granola or something crunchy because again everything here is soft so you're going to want to have like different layers of flavor and of texture and i would just add some over that we have some like big old chunky pieces that's not the ones i want and now we're just going to like just add it over top oh this is amazing I want to dig into this right now I want to dig into this right right now look at that I'm telling you, you serve this to your guests and they're not gonna know what hit them so good so 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 good Tiger Lily says, yeah, we need that crunch. So what I'm actually going to do real quick, I'm going to set this in the refrigerator and I'm going to make myself a little mini trifle so that I can eat it on camera with you guys and tell you exactly how it tastes like because it's so, so, so good. All right, so let me just clean up a little bit. All right, so pretty much, let's see what I have here. I might need to cut up that other little piece. struggle bus hour so these are just like little cookie cutters so i want to make myself my own little mini trifle i'm doing the most right now i'm aware i'm going to set this in the refrigerator quick real quick again whipped cream likes to stay cold so just a second and what i'm going to do i'm going to make myself a little mini one so what i'm going to do is have here and this is purely just to have fun oh yes all right i'm so excited all right so let me just cut up like two three slices of this someone says don't be trifling girl i see what you did there <laughs> that's pretty funny so I'm going to take the cookie cutter and I'm just going to like cut myself a little piece. I'm going to cut myself a few little layers. This is something if you really wanted to like serve something fancy at your next barbecue or party, this is, this is a complete hack that you can do. I'm going to cut two more layers, this one and one more. Oh my God, I'm so excited. These things, this is like, my mom is probably watching this like, tu siempre ando inventando algo. Again, these are just like fun little desserts that you can make and people go absolutely crazy for them. Like, you don't even understand. So, I'm just gonna have these off to the side and we're literally just gonna create like little mini trifles. So we're gonna take our pound cake, just a little dollop of the sweet condensed milk. Hey, hey, hey. Yep, that's all we want. Cause remember, this is this is bite size. Ya estoy en miniatura. We're just gonna like spread that. And these are argue when I tell you like people love bite size desserts. 
Like they go absolutely crazy for them. We're gonna add some whipped cream, just swirl it about. We're gonna add a little strawberry. And now for our next layer, again, rinse and repeat. We're gonna add just a little healthy dollop of sweet condensed milk. Hey, Chef Z, what do you do with all the leftover pound cake, the mean sugar high? So this leftover pound cake is gonna be for my family. And the other thing that I can actually do is I love to actually break it up and mix it together with some melted white chocolate and make cake pops. Now I should mention that I am celebrating my grandfather's 90th birthday. So this, I have plans for this extra pound cake. Oh, we lost the layer, that's fine. We're just trying to be super fancy right now. So we're doing our little guava layer. Might need a little bit more guava actually, just to flood the sides. And flooding is a baking term. When you want something with a high viscosity, meaning it's runny, to go towards the end. And now we're going to add another layer, our final layer, another dollop of sweet condensed milk. Oh yeah, Woo. we are in business. Oh my goodness. And then to that, we're going to add some whipped cream again. Now, if I were serving this, just like these little mini ones at a party, I would actually put like a little uh, like lollipop stick or a cake pop stick through the center so that it holds its shape. Also, the putting it in the fridge will help stabilize it as well. And now we're just going to add a nice strawberry over top with a yummy little blueberry. We can't forget about our added crunch. So we're just gonna, oh, too much, too much. Run that back. And again, because we want that little added crunch at the end, we're just gonna decorate that at the very top. Oh, I wish I had some mint leaves just to like round this out. But there you guys have it. That is a little mini no-bake strawberry guava trifle. We have some guava jam seeping through the sides. Oh, so, so good. This is definitely fun to serve at a party, especially when people are making them on their own. Someone said, yeah, Mr. Z with the sticky hands, that's a lucky man. <laughs> he is, he definitely, definitely is. We have Tammy that says hi from Texas. Thank you guys for joining us from all over. I wanna dig into this. Again, you guys know when I'm serving this to guests, I add the granola or any of like the crunchy wafer toppings so right before I serve it, but you do want to let it like sit in the refrigerator. All right, so let's, let's cut, should I cut it in half, babe? We're gonna cut this in half. Let's cut. Oh yeah. Look at that. Can you see the layers? Can you see the layers? Oh, so, so good. All right, let's see how I can eat this in one <laughs> in one go. All right. Sorry, I'm going to have to like, oop, leaning tower. And now let's cut into this. I want to make sure y'all can see this. All right. I want a little bit of everything in every bite. Mm, a ver, a ver, a ver, a ver. Como no quedo, como no quedo. Let's see. I need a second bite because that guava jam with the berries and the fresh whipped cream. Oh, 
thief. Mr. Sticky Hands strikes again. We're fighting. We are for sure fighting. All right, let me get the second bite. Oh, so, so good. Mm. That is amazing. Mm. It's wild. <laughs> That's me with a sugar rush. <laughs> All right, guys, so this was a no-bake trifle. Super, super good. You can make a few of these. If I had a bigger dish, it would have taken the full two pound cakes. Again, I have plans for this because it's actually my grandfather's birthday this weekend, so we're having like a little situation for him with our family, a little family reunion. And you know what? This is actually a perfect time to let you guys know. So I'm planning on taking some time off this summer. Believe it or not, this has been live stream number four. 14. Some of you guys have been showing up and showing out week after week to hang out with me 14 times, which is crazy. And I'm so thankful for that. But I actually have a couple of big events coming up in the next couple of weeks. Um, it's actually my very first <laughs> wedding anniversary. So my husband and I were talking today and we were like, what are we doing for an anniversary? And we're like, I don't know, but it's kind of around the corner. So we're actually thinking about taking some time off, enjoying the rest of the summer. So next week is going to be the last live stream. So definitely be on the lookout for what we're going to be making. It's gonna be a really good one. And I just wanna thank you guys again from the bottom of my heart for taking the time and your schedule to come hang and to come kick it with me all summer long. It's definitely been a blast. I hope you guys have enjoyed all of the amazing tasty food that we've made from the chofan to the pollo guisado to the ceviche and to the no big strawberry trifle today, which is hands down absolutely perfect for the summer. Now, before we sign off for the rest of the night, I just want to see what you guys are talking about, you guys always make my day so we have Lizbeth who says Dios mio que so bueno se ve que es bueno que se ve eso oh y quedó riquísimo riquísimo uh someone says happy birthday to your grandfather I will definitely let him know Mr. A says is the jam the jam <laughs> Someone says, wow, 14. Yeah, it definitely has been 14 live streams, believe it or not. And I can't believe just how quickly this summer is going by. Next week is already August. And next week is already our anniversary, which is crazy to think that, A, we've been married for a year. We've been together for a lot longer than a year, okay? I've been dealing with Mr. Sticky Fingers for a long time, but we've been married for a year. And so we want to do something special. So can't believe that, oh my goodness, it's August already, which means that this summer, we're getting into the dog days of summer. It's coming to an end, it's coming to a close. And so I was like, you know what? I think next week will be the last one. Definitely hit me up on Instagram, hit me up here on YouTube. Let me know what dish I should make for our last live stream. As a matter of fact, I will put out a community tab. Well. It's an open forum. You guys can make your suggestions and I will choose the dish based on what you guys suggest. It just can't be something that I've already done during, excuse me, cake, burp, I apologize. <laughs> it just can't be something that I've already done obviously like during the live stream. So if it's something else that I haven't made, like what happened, I'm, I haven't made black beans and I love black beans. So that's another good one, but the decision is yours. So you guys let me know. Caroline says, happy anniversary. So Christian says, Chef Z, are you going to continue doing live streams? I want to do a lot more live streams. Please do not stop doing live streams. Yes. So the live streams aren't going anywhere. So for the summer, I only did live streams because it allowed me the opportunity to actually work on some like little secret projects that you guys will be seeing very soon. Sneak, peek, hello, hello. Um, this is some of the stuff I've been working on this summer. But the regular shorter YouTube videos are going to be making a comeback in addition to live stream. So live streaming has been such a positive experience. You guys have been really enjoying them as well. So I will do them in addition to my regular YouTube videos and we'll get back to our regularly scheduled programming very, very soon after my little mini break. <laughs> 
CG Pipeline says we need these aprons. These Listen, okay? I am trying to get them in y'all's hands as quickly as possible. Just please bear with me. The live stream fan will be the first to know because you guys saw the... You guys actually... I wasn't even trying to sneak peek it. And you guys picked up on it very quickly. So I was like, oh. So the live stream fan will definitely get the exclusive. Uh, Mr. A says, I watched the, I re-watched the live streams and make the recipes. <laughs> Thank you. You guys are amazing. Someone says, love the live streams. We need the aprons. So glad to see a Dominican chef on YouTube. I'm here to service you guys. You guys make my world. And now with that being said, it has been an amazing live stream. I hope you guys are safe and cool this weekend. And until next week, I'm Chef Z. Y buen provecho. Before I log off, let's, let's take another look at our hard work. <laughs> oh, me two hands. So here is the beauty that we made today. No bake, beautiful, tasty. Just letting it set up in the refrigerator and get nice and cold. This is definitely something that you want to serve while it's chilly. Super, super, super tasty. Thank you again for joining us. Until next week, I'm Chef Z. Y buen provecho. It's our last live stream. So be